Gwen, we're going to try and recap your 2023 season here. Yep. And so I think we are uh, 11 months into this Gwen 2.0, we're calling it. And, you know, I didn't count before this video that we're recording now, but I mean, you did a ton of racing this year. We started in New Zealand. We, you know, traveled all over the world. And I don't think that, uh, I think the schedule that you ended up doing is certainly not the schedule that you thought you would be doing. And maybe had we told you if you were doing this schedule in December of last year when you announced your return, I'm not sure that you would have been like, no, like that, that, that's not what I'm doing. So, you know, maybe before we go into kind of some of the races, like maybe just speak to speak to that, right? And the, yeah. the ability that you haven't been able to plan this year. You haven't been able to, you know, yeah, really know. Yeah, this year has been really hard not being able to plan races, not knowing where I'm going to race. And like you said, I did so many races. I don't think I've ever raced this much. And so it was also, you know, having this balance of trying to maintain fitness through racing and all these long haul travels. So, yeah, you know, a lot of um, finding out I'm racing race week, packing up, traveling, um, you know, to Europe or Japan or wherever it is, um, with, you know, less than a week or two notice and trying to, you know, race a race that I haven't prepared for and then trying to recover and then racing again the next week. Um, yeah, it, it was hard and something that, uh, I, I don't really prefer to do. I, I really like to plan for races, um, hit them and, and do them with, intent and focus and so I wasn't really able to do that I think like the only race I really could do that for this year was New Plymouth uh, I think it's kind of you know it, it was weird this year I think but when we when Pat when you and I talked about what I would be doing before I kind of announced to everyone you suggested like why don't you just like just do World Cups like you don't need to do any WTCS races uh, I just spend the first year doing World Cups. And I think that's, um, you know, if you look at my World Cup season, it's been phenomenal. And, you know, I was doing WTCSs when I could get into them. And um, I think it was a little more difficult for me to perform when I didn't have that time to prepare. And some of those races, frankly, I just wasn't ready for yet. Early season. Cool. You know, ultimately you had four World Cup wins two World Cup silver medals, uh, and then you had some World Series races that maybe didn't go as well as you had hoped. But despite, you know, kind of the roller coaster of results, is there a moment that you're super proud of? I think my performance in Carlo Rivari was, uh, I was very happy with. It's a non-runner's course. It's a super hard bike. Uh, there were some really fast swimmers there, and so I think that that race I was super proud of. And, um, you know, even, you know, if you look at my WTCS races, I think each one I was improving, um, you know, the first one I got lapped out. So, um, there was, there was huge improvement in that as well. And just me kind of relearning how to race. I think I, every race I felt like I was improving. And even, you know, after this last race in Vino Del Mar, I just felt like, uh, I still want to keep going this season. Like I felt like I still had things that I could improve upon. And I think a lot of times, usually in the past, the season would end and I'd be like, thank goodness, I need a break. Um, you know, I was kind of at peak fitness all year. And I felt like this year I didn't really ever maybe even see that peak fitness. I felt like I just kept building and building. Cool. And then on the flip side of that, uh, you know, is there a race that, that still kind of stings for you or thought, you know, like, oh man, I just, I wish... I could get a mulligan and do that one again the next day. Like what, what sticks out for you there? Yeah, a ton of them. Um, but I think, you know, the, the big one being the, the grand final grand final in, um, Pontevedra, it was a race that, you know, I just, uh, it, it's hard to know what to do. Cause I had two world cup wins right before that. And looking back, I'm like, Oh, I should have just not done those races. Just hoped that I was going to get on the start list and just, you know, cause I didn't know I was going to be on that start until right before. And so we planned to do those two world cups and then I rolled onto the start list. Um, but you know, racing those two Olympic distance races, the two prior weeks just took a lot out of my body. So I would have, I would love to have done that race again. Um, there were some moments in there that were really good and yeah, 
but you know, you can't go back and back in time. And, um, I don't regret doing those two world cups. Uh, like I said, when I started this video that, um, you know, one of those world cups call of Vivari was my, one of my favorite moments of the entire year. Cool. And then, um, you know, what was it like just, can you give the audience like an understanding of what it's been like for our family and what the travel's been like and what, you know, you've learned along the way where we were, we were traveling as a family at the start of the year and then you've been traveling solo and like what worked, what didn't, and you know, what will probably be your method of going forward? Yeah. When I started this, I had my ideal plan, which is everyone comes together. We bring Lulu, our, our au pair, Patrick comes, um, you know, Patrick does limited work while he's there. Um, and so he can help out with the family. And, uh, that was kind of my ideal scenario. And we did a couple trips like that. And we just kind of learned like it was what was maybe best for me. Wasn't best for our family as a whole. It was, uh, really trying to think on Stanley, uh, to not have friends. It was hard for George. He's, you know, especially at this age right now, he's moving, he's mobile, he wants toys. And so when you travel to a new place, it's not baby proof. It's really hard to live in a space that's not for a baby. Uh, and then, you know, as well, I think, you know, dragging Patrick along when he has work to do isn't really fair to him as well. So I think, you know, we tried many different scenarios. We tried where Patrick came with just one of the boys instead of both boys and I really enjoyed that as well but Stanley didn't like being away from his brother which I totally understand so yeah we've kind of had to every race I feel like we tried something different and we've just kind of been figuring out what is best for our family as a whole and, and I think ultimately if I'm gone for less than two weeks it's usually probably best for me to do a solo trip and if I'm gone for a long time, the family coming out in between races or, you know, maybe, um, you know, right after a race when I have some downtime is a really great time for everyone to join. So that's kind of what the plan is going forward. We had no plan at the start of this year. And I feel like now we have a really good plan of what works, what doesn't and how to implement that this next year, which I think could also help not only, um, you know, for our family, but also for my performance. Can you give us some context around probably who who you got to thank for this year and do your best to give those thank yous? And if you're obviously missing one, I'll, I might give you I might give you a little layup there. But um, I just I feel like there's been a ton of people that have helped you personally, professionally this year, and it's I would like to recognize them. Yeah, tons of people. Uh, you know, obviously the family, you guys. Um, Lulu, our au pair, people that, um, you know, really make it possible for me to even travel. And then, you know, some of my internal team, which also includes Patrick, obviously, but, um, you know, Jamie, my coach is somebody who I've started working again with, and he's been, he's blown me away with, um, you know, some of the support he's given me and some of the really bad performances I had. I'd say there was a performance or two where I performed under where I was kind of training. And so for him to, you know, continue to support me and encourage me and kind of see the bigger picture in all of that um, was, was really helpful for me as well to, to kind of overcome that. Um, and then my psychologist, Jason, who I've been working really closely, who's really helped me overcome my mom guilt. That was super bad. Um, still struggle with that, but like I I really struggled to just even go to a race because of that. And so, um, you know, I, I wouldn't get my hair cut. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything because I felt like I, I just had all this guilt, um, around needing to spend every moment of every day with my children. And so he's really helped me overcome that. I think that was huge. Obviously my sponsors, I've had a lot of sponsors who backed me, um, and, you know, allowed me to do this job, uh, you know, paying me and, in a, they started, you know, supporting me before I had any sort of performances, you know, do my first World Cup, get 14th place. Um, so, you know, yeah, you know, coming back, I think postpartum racing, my first race before not even four months postpartum, having those people believe in me and stick with me through those times when I was racing and I knew I wasn't at capacity and I, you know, wasn't even close to where I needed to be. So that was really special as well. Who am I missing, Pat? Oh, look, I think you, you got the main ones. Um, you know, maybe we'll, I'll close out here, but one theme that I've really seen from you this in this Gwen 2.0, we're calling it, is you've seemed to just 
have a lot more fun and a lot more joy. And I think even, you know, Kenny's joined to do some stuff like you were, you were racing criteriums, you were doing aquathons, you've been doing cyclocross races. And I just see a lot more, uh, just positivity and just a lot more smiling and like you just seem like you're really enjoying your job right now and and I don't know that's that's worth some sort of watts come race day but can you just you know even if you look at like your galleries from races you're just smiling in a lot of photos can you can you talk about that at all yeah I mean I I am having a lot of fun and I think you know I when I retired from triathlon in, in 2016, it was because I wasn't having fun. And so to come back and to find the joy in everything. And, you know, I think, you know, I know that I'm an older athlete and I'm not going to be able to do this forever. I think I'm really not taking any moment for granted. And I think that is something that allows me to have more joy. And then as well, you know, I know like I'm, I'm able to maximize my time training and having fun. And I know that as well, like this helps with my mom guilt. Like I am a better person because I'm able to do something that I love and something that fills me up. And then I'm able to uh, fill my children up as well. So yeah, I think it's just, it's been super fun to be able to do that. Um, there's something else I was going to say based on what you said, Patrick, and I don't know now. Oh, I know. So my whole theme of this year has been like to be bold. And I think uh, I've done a really good job at exposing myself in so many different ways. Um, you know, racing when I wasn't ready physically, uh, doing criteriums. Uh, you know, I've really challenged myself in in ways that I wouldn't have uh, many years ago. And so I've been super proud of that. And I think that as well has brought me joy, even though it scares me to do a lot of those things. I've been super proud of just the growth that I've been able to have um, and be able to do some things that I've never done before at the age of 37 is something that I was, you know, I think that just brings me a lot of joy as well. Any other questions from Patrick or Kenny? We're good. That's the season recap. Stay tuned for 2024. It's going to be a big year. There's a Olympic qualifying event in May in Yokohama, Japan. It's going to be top three there, auto qualifier for um, Team USA. Still two slots open for the women, so it's going to be a good off season. I'm excited to get going. Thanks, guys.